Good morning, folks. If you haven't heard, we have a potential new meteor shower visible mostly to the northern hemisphere coming at the end of this week. Most estimates put zenith rates around 75 to 100 meteors per hour, which would make it one of the better showers we get this year. It's important to understand that this meteor shower, if it exists, will be due to the activity of Comet Linear back in the 1800s, when scientists believe it was highly active. This is the position from one day from now, but back in 1868. This is a vital point because there's been some shenanigans on YouTube about some potential huge boulders and potential devastation due to incoming meteor impacts. This is false. There is no debris field that anyone is actually tracking. There is a dust field. We don't need to track anything. Comet Linear is still around, but it's a puny little thing and mostly throwing off dust and ions. I will be outside watching for it. I suggest you do the same in the hours before sunrise, but don't you worry about any big rocks, folks. Not one bit. Just enjoy the show. Today's a good day to go watch our El Nino video from April 23rd. I'll link it for you beneath this video. Every day it looks like we're more and more certain to have one, and it also appears that we may begin to see the return of heat much sooner than expected. If it's not your first day here, you know global warming is really climate extremes, and the cold extremes have been dominating lately. But the April Global Climate Report seems to show that we may be shifting back to heat now. We have a good deal more heat events than cold, although we did set yet another high record ice extent at Antarctica. The underside is still in record melt, no doubt about it. It's just that those are caused by the ocean heat vents and underground volcanoes that are admittedly omitted from all current forecast models. Anyway, that doesn't change the fact that we had a global shift back to the other extreme, and to see it, we compare the 2014 year-to-date records with those of just the last month for the U.S. and globe. Daily records, 2014 so far, there have been more than double the amount of record cold events as there were heat. Double. But heat is actually winning over the last 30 days. Heat has double the monthly cold records in the last 30 days, but is still getting lambasted by cold over the entire year to date by a factor of four. All-time records are the only place that heat has not jumped ahead of cold in the United States. Bit calm there, so let's go global. Heat winning the daily records over the last 30 days, but still 50% behind for 2014 on the whole. Heat dominating monthly records lately, but getting dominated over 2014 so far. Again, the all-time records are not helpful. And remember, folks, this is not about winter or summer. It is about records for that time of year. Anyway, we're finally looking at a tropical system for development in the Bay of Bengal. Got a lot of precipitable water on the way and already part of the system. Measurement mission caught a look at the low last night and it appears to deliver major flood warnings in the coming days. Let's head to Europe. You can see the primary low at the western coastlines. Powerful convergence in the top watch zone for Europe today. Check your local forecast. Not much to report down under. Same cloud lines from yesterday. The storms that popped up in the U.S. last night looked fairly powerful. The central lows did their thing. But the position of the double low that exists is making a lateral convergence rather than those ones knuckling north and south towards the equator. They will happen anywhere two air masses as different as these are forced to work out their differences as they smash together. What happens in chemistry when you have a lot of change that needs to take place in a small space in rapid time? Exactly. He longs for the days when there were solar flares to report and analyze. Earth is magnetically connected to the sun at the departing limb down south with a couple active regions still leaving the disk, but our eyes now turn towards the incoming limb. The magnetics of the group appear to show separation side to side, but the multiple umbras seen there may mix about in the coming days. Solar wind is calm now, but we are expecting a boundary crossing and possible coronal stream today and tomorrow. Add some space weather to the earth-facing coronal hole, which, although is only of moderate power, is equatorial and directly earth-facing. Our earthquake condition index dropped into sea range last night, but we are now going to rise back up today into an uptick. South Pole already getting us started. Current conditions and shots of our star to close. Eyes open. No fear. It's 6.45 a.m. Eastern Time, and that's the news. Be safe, everyone. One more quick note, actually. As we were processing, had to cancel. Six pointers hit Mexico and the uptick begins.